What's going on guys? Aaron and Mike down at Shoot Center in Cape Coral. Today we're going to be talking about the Generation 5 Glock. We're going to do a little bit of comparison between the 5 and the Gen 4 and then we're going to go on to the range and we're going to shoot it. And I actually don't have a ton of experience shooting the Gen 5 because I'm still carrying a Generation 4. Yeah, so am I. I, I have shot it a few times off our, our range line though. We do have it available for renting. Cool. Yeah, so uh, in case you guys don't know about uh, the changes made to the gener Generation 5, we're just going to kind of walk through it with you guys. Um, probably the first thing that you'll notice if you were to look at a 19 Gen 4 versus a 19 Gen 5 is one has finger grooves and one does not. So some people really like the finger grooves, um, some people can't stand them. But the Gen 5 does not have any finger grooves. Right, yeah, which is what I prefer. Yeah, I like the finger grooves. Yeah. yeah they don't bother me at all. Plus, if you don't like them, you can always grind them off. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? yeah. Uh, something else that you guys will notice when you look at it is the uh, magazine well on the Gen 5 versus the Gen 4 is flared. Again, you know, not something that, that people necessarily really like or dislike, uh, but, you know, definitely I'd say factually speaking, if you have a flared magazine well, it absolutely does make your reloads easier because you know if you're not perfect on the magazine insert if you have a little bit of flare there it does make it easier to insert um, so you know what people usually do with the gen 4s is they'll actually just put in an aftermarket magazine well something like this from Zev or even Magpul makes some I have a Magpul one really inexpensive um, polymer versus this is an aluminum um, and once you put the flared magazine well on there it makes your magazine changes a little bit easier so the Glock Gen 5s come with this um, the Glock 26 Gen 5 the 19 the 17 and then there's also a 34 MOS which is a slide that is um, basically set up to go ahead and, and uh, allow the mounting of an optic like a Trijicon RMR reflex sight or a uh, Vortex Viper or um, uh, Viper, and then what's the other one I'm missing? Razor. Razor, yep. That's a really popular, um, you know, I want to get into three gun or I want to get into speed shooting. That's a yeah. really popular gun because it's ready to be built out. Yeah, and you know, Glock is not everyone's cup of tea. Um, a lot of people like guns just based off of the way they feel in their hand, and of course a Glock isn't built for every person. Um, but, you know, the reliability is really, really good. I mean, yeah. we, we rent a lot of handguns. We have a really big handgun selection here, machine guns, rifles, etc. And the Glocks, especially our European guests come in and they really want to shoot a Glock yeah. handgun. It's That's, kind of like a staple. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. And we have, I think, uh, 10 different models at least. So the point is the Glock get a, uh, as a rental gun, right? The, the Glock gets a lot of use. I would say it gets a disproportionate amount of use versus some of the other guns. And we really don't have any issues. With it. I, we haven't had any issues yet. So, and I don't see any coming. Yeah, so it's, a, it's definitely a workhorse. Um, and it's uh, very, very reliable. Something else to consider about just Glock as a uh, manufacturer, in case you guys can't tell I like Glocks. Um, <laughs> something else to consider about a Glock, a Glock as a manufacturer is a lot of other companies out there will farm out the manufacture of components of their guns. Very, very common in the industry. Um, I'd say it's almost universal to, to some degree. Almost every company out there will farm out some of the manufacture of their components. Um, and you know, if you've never taken apart a gun before, there are a lot of different pieces, a lot of different components, um, even with a Glock, although they're relatively simple. Um, Glock does 100% of their manufacturing in-house. So let's say you come out with a new model and you have a problem with a particular component uh, or you know you, you evaluate uh, what the gun's doing or what the gun's not doing and you think it might be a spring. Well that spring is made in uh, Brazil, right? So now you've got to go to Brazil and argue with them about whether or not their quality control measures are in place. With Glock, everything's done in-house. So if they have a problem with a firearm, they just go and fix it. Right there on the spot. Yeah. So uh, let's run through some of the other um, changes to the Gen 5 over the Gen 4. You want to throw a couple out there? Um, one that I really like is the Ambi slide release. Uh, that's big because not everybody shoots right. Um, you know, the left hand shooters are really appreciative of that. 
Um, and then the big one also, when you uh, you know get past the 25 yard mark when you're shooting pistols, uh, you know it opens up a whole different world. And uh, Glock's got their match grade barrel, so they enhance the rifling. Yep. Um, and so you know this is a true easy 50 yard pistol. Uh, and that's been proven on bench. Right, right. Yeah, I actually just spoke with uh, someone at Glock and they had mentioned that they were present for the testing of the marksman barrel. And in a ransom rest, if you're not familiar with what ransom, ransom, R A N S O M, in a ransom rest, what you do with a ransom rest is you can take a firearm and you can, you can remove shooter error. It will hold the handgun for you. And also you can um, manipulate the trigger with a lever. So you want to try to remove shooter error out of it completely. In a ransom rest at 50 yards, it was consistent. Consistently uh, sub two inches, so that'd be sub uh, four MOA at 100 yards, right? So uh, definitely a true uh, marksman barrel. What else we got? Uh, well, you just brought up about uh, manipulating the trigger, and uh, that's been a new, a big change too. Yeah, the trigger definitely feels much, much better over the stock Gen 4. Now again. Most people will upgrade the triggers in their Glocks anyways, and for those of you guys out there who have a Glock, if you're looking for one thing to really make it a better shooter for you, it's generally going to be upgrading the trigger. And that's the nice thing about a Glock too, is they're very easy to install uh, versus some of the other handguns that are out there. And as a result, because of the popularity and the ease of install and the simplicity of design, there are a lot of companies out there that provide um, um, aftermarket parts that you can install. Um, but that said, the Gen 5 definitely has a better trigger over the Gen 4 out of the box. Yeah. Um, also, the firing pin safety plunger. Uh, I'll just go ahead and show you guys real quick the difference between the Gen 5 and the Gen 4. Uh, just big picture stuff here. What the firing pin safety plunger does is it ensures that the firing pin cannot strike uh, forward of the breech block. So it cannot strike the primer in the ammunition until you actually pull the trigger. So the firing pin safety plunger, which is here, this has to be moved out of the way by way of the trigger before the firing pin can actually expose itself. So you probably can't see that very well, but this is your firing pin safety plunger. Now this one versus the Gen 4, you'll notice on the Gen 4, which is gonna be to your right, uh, the firing pin safety plunger is round. And on the left here, the Gen 5, the firing pin safety plunger is a different design entirely. What this does is it gives more consistency. So when you press the trigger and the trigger bar pushes up on the firing pin safety plunger, you get a more consistent action here versus on the Gen 4 because the plunger in the Gen 4 will actually spin as yeah. the gun cycles it will spin. Um, so supposedly a much, much better smoother. action and definitely smoother on the trigger pull overall. Although I wouldn't say this is 100% why, this is just one of the reasons why I think the trigger pull is smoother on the five versus the Gen 4. With the slides off, you can see the uh, difference in finishes as well. So the new, the Gen 5 has the DLC finish on it, uh, which is more heat resistant, more corrosion resistant. Um, and I, in my opinion, it just looks a lot better. It does look really, really nice. The one thing people are saying, though, is some people don't like how slick it is. Yeah. You can look at it and tell right away it's a higher quality finish than the Gen 4, the Gen 3 uh, Glocks. Some people don't like how slick it is. Yeah. One thing you can do is you could go to a company like Loki Tactical. You can have them do some work on the slide and you can make the, uh, the serrations on the slide a little bit more aggressive and easier for you to manipulate it. And also your uh, bevels. So if you look on your front of your slide here, and you can tell, again, Gen 4, Gen 5, they've actually beveled the edges on your slide here. It's nice. It's nice. It's nice for reholstering when you're yeah. when you're when you're doing some training, uh, and just in general, it's nice to have less hard hard edges. I think and less hard corners. It's a little bit smoother. Um, what else we have changes wise with the Gen 5 over the Gen 4? I think we pretty much covered all of the major stuff. Yeah. It is it is nice to have to have that ambidextrous slide release. We have it on the left side and the right. So now you know I really feel even better about if people ask, you know, what do you recommend or what gun do you like? And if I say, hey, have you ever looked into Glock? But they're a lefty, that was always kind of a yeah. bummer. Um, but now we have a ambidextrous slide release 
which is a setup for a left-handed shooter. And then on the magazine release, we can just take this out for you guys and swap it around, and then it'll be set up for a left-handed shooter also. And we can do, uh, they do have the extended releases that can be installed with the AMI. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's a pretty easy upgrade. A lot of people like the extended side release. Yeah, most of the stuff that, that we recommend for Glocks, to, and this is really just, guys, honestly, this just really comes from personal experience. Um, I've tried a lot of different um, slide releases, and the issue for some people, based off of the technique that you use to release the slide, you might use dominant thumb, you might use non-dominant thumb, you might slingshot the slide or go overhand. Um, in the case that you use appendages, you know, like using your thumbs, these slide releases can be a little difficult to catch. Uh, and you know, if your thumb isn't really long enough or strong enough to press down on it, get one, and I have one on my gun anyways, get a extended slide release made by Vickers Tactical. I like this one because it's not too big, which can catch on things uh, and can cause you to accidentally lock the slide open when firing. Um, but it's definitely, you know, bigger than the OEM, the original yeah. equipment manufactured by Glock. I run that on every one of my Glocks. That's yeah. one of the first things that triggers. That's kind of the go-to. Yeah, this would be the number one upgrade. Um, the sights that the Glock comes with, you know, aren't the greatest either. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of the funny thing about Glocks is you'll, you'll hear people say, well, you've got you to change out everything in the gun. Uh, and, you know, to a degree, um, it might be true. You might find that you want to change out the trigger or change out the sights. But what you're also getting is a very, very reliable gun. And for me, you know, we're trying to control all variables here, and the gun has to work. You know, we want the gun to be reliable. If the gun doesn't work or the gun breaks, then it uh, kind of defeats the purpose of carrying something that you might want to use in case of an emergency. Plus, you're investing money in something. You don't want it to break, right? You want it to, uh, you want it to function. So, and Glock makes a ton of different models out there. You want to run through them? <laughs> All of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well now I'll tell you, through. I'll Just tell you the go-tos. The basics. The yeah, basics. the basics, the go-tos that I see fly off the shelves here, because we sell Five Glocks to every one, or uh, vice versa. Vice versa. Yeah, one in one. five handguns we sell is a Glock. Right. Uh, so, you know, you got your 42s, which is the 380 model, super easy concealment gun. Uh, the 43 uh, is the 9mm single stack, uh, six round capacity. It's an awesome gun as well. Yeah, I have I've got one. I, yep, we both have one of those. Then you get up into the double stacks, the 26, 27, which is still a uh, compact gun, uh, just a double stack, so it's a little bit wider. Uh, 26, Gen 5 came out. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And then you've got your 19s, your 17s, and your full size. So you've got you know your 21s. Yeah. Um, and, and then it just goes on. Well, you get up into the, the 34s. The, the workhorse really is the Glock 19. Yeah. Um, if you want to slide this a little bit longer, and you want plus two, an additional two rounds capacity, and a little bit longer uh, magazine well, which might make it easier for you to grip. Glock 17. Um, so I'd say 19 is the number one seller. Yep. 19, uh, and then probably the 43s. 43s, but yeah, that for sure. That sells a lot. Yeah. A 9 millimeter single stack, um, very, very concealable. Um, and the, the Glock 34s are really popular too. Yeah. It's just a longer slide, but it still has the frame of a Glock 17. You can actually run a Glock 34 slide on a Glock 17 lower right. and, and vice versa. Um, so anyways, and then if you like, uh, you know, the slide size of the 19, uh, and the grip of the 17, the 19X, <laughs> yep. the 19X, the controversial yeah. 19X. So that the U S army looked at this firearm and was considering, um, adopting it as it's, uh, Secondary weapon, right? So backup weapon to a primary, which would be just an M4 um, rifle. And they ended up going with SIG P320, great handgun. Mm -hmm. um, but Glock decided to go ahead and release this in this configuration. And what a lot of people don't like is the fact that the frame is the size of a Glock 17. So we're longer here. But the slide is the size of a Glock 19, which is shorter than a Glock 17. So it seems kind of like backwards, ass backwards, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, yeah. Because you know you'd want longer sights, longer barrel, which might make you a more accurate shooter. But this, if I'm going to conceal carry this, this is the part that sticks out of my shirt. So why would I want this to be bigger? Right. 
Um, and a lot of people who are real hardcore Glock people, they're also hardcore concealed carry people as well. So it didn't really fit their needs. But remember, this gun was also designed for the U.S. Army. Right, not for with, with them in mind. They wanted this extra capacity, but this is the length that they want. Now the weird thing is, when you shoot a Glock 19X, I swear the balance in the gun is totally different. Yeah. And just kind of talking with other people in the community, they were saying the same thing. We all the it just feels different. It's yeah, weird. Yeah. We can't really put a finger on it. Um, you know, I would say probably the weight, but also the full size of the grip as well. Um, it just. I don't know, it shoots really nice, it points really well. I like the uh, the recovery between shots is nice. Um, so, it's yep. a nice gun. Yeah, I'm a fan of it. Comes with a nice nice sights on it as well. Yeah. And it's got the PVD finish over... The NDLC? Yeah, the, the stock finish that's on the Gen 5. So you've got, you know, double coating on that thing. It's resistant. Yeah, for sure. And so we're beating up, you know, Glocks here, and we're really obviously we both like Glock. Uh, plenty of other great manufacturers yeah, out there, for sure. Um, but you know, a lot of us do like Glocks. And um, something to think about too: Glock was already very reliable. The Generation Five is um, hands down. Uh, this is officially un unofficially official, but <laughs> hands down the most reliable firearm that uh, Glock has produced to date. Um, you know, completely unverified, but I had heard a rumor out there um, that during a reliability test there were uh, six handguns, oh, yeah. 20,000 round reliability test, each gun zero malfunctions across six different guns. That's uh, very, very significant. And they said what, they ran them in two days? And uh, it was just, just a rumor, oh, so right. I really yeah. don't know. Yeah, they put but, them through uh, the test, so. They definitely got beat up well. So, um, not a gun you have to baby. Certainly not a gun you have to baby. We don't baby them. I, I don't baby mine either. It, get, it gets used. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you want to go shoot these or what? Yeah, let's do that. Shoot? Let's shoot the, the, the Gen 4 uh, 19 and the uh, Gen 5 19. Let's do like a side by side. Yeah, yeah. Sounds, Sounds good to me. All right, let's do it. All right, All right so we're going to go to the range. We're going to test fire the Glock 17, both Gen 4 and Gen 5. Got a couple drills, basic stuff, some slow aim fires, some control pairs, some five round rhythm drills. And we're going to be shooting rubber dummies with the uh, Garrett machine, um, anatomically correct paper targets with to actually show the heart, vasculature, and lungs. So let's go shoot them. Look at that. Separate five. We got how many Marines we have working here now? Like ten? Yeah. Way too many. Way like too many. Everybody. Whoa! Right, this guy. <laughs> almost kicked him in the face. And we're gonna shoot the Glock 19 Generation 4. It's a 9mm something we're really familiar with, but we're gonna compare it to the Glock um, 17 Generation 5. And I really, uh, you know, I don't have a lot of experience shooting the Generation 5 yet, but it is a more accurate gun and it does have a better trigger feel as well. So we'll do some slow aim fire with the Gen 4, and we'll bounce over to the Gen 5, and then we'll do some controlled pairs, and then we'll do some rhythm drills, and uh, we'll see how it shoots. Let's get started. Not my best work. We're shooting at 10 yards. Um, you know, uh, pretty slow aim fire. More or less center mass. Got uh, a couple hits to the heart. Now let's shoot the Gen 5 and see how that feels. Definitely felt a lot smoother on the trigger. Shot a little bit faster. Felt like I could shoot a little bit faster because the trigger was just better on the stock, um, the stock Gen 5 versus the Gen 4. And even at that rate of fire, the accuracy was still about the same. Now we're gonna run some control pairs. We'll go ahead and pause the camera real quick. We'll change out the target, put up a new target, and uh, we'll start shooting. 
All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot the Gen 4, and we've actually bumped it up to a, a full-size uh, Gen 4 Glock 17, which is a better side-by-side -side comparison with the uh, full-size Gen 5 Glock 17. So all we're gonna do now is run some control pairs. We're, at, uh, we're gonna shoot at about seven yards, and then we're gonna run some rhythm drills. Here we go. Six rounds on target, pretty close range, seven yards, but a very realistic range. So the idea with control pair is we're shooting two rounds as quickly as possible. Now in reality, you're gonna shoot until the, the desired effects are achieved, right? But in training, what we're really practicing here is recovery between shots and trigger preparation, right? Before that second shot fires off. Shooting as quickly as you can get that second round on target, but without sacrificing accuracy. So let's try it with the uh, Gen 5. All right, let's check the target. So on that reset there, I just run the uh, Gen 4. It's kind of interesting. As I reset on one of the drills, I actually fired a third shot, which can happen as you start to kind of feel out how much pressure it takes for your trigger to reset. So I just ran the Gen 4. Now I'm running the Gen 5. Felt like the pressure I was applying was about the same and actually had a third round um, go off. Accuracy pretty solid. I felt like the trigger was much, much better again on the Gen 5 versus the Gen 4, just out, out of the box. So let's run some five round rhythm drills. All right, so now we're gonna run the Glock, um, Gen 4, Glock 17, and uh, we're gonna run rhythm drills. So all I'm gonna do is just shoot um, one rhythm drill of five rounds on target, which in training, working from the holster, or working from concealment, five rounds on target, that's a pretty good number to work with. So we're gonna run that drill twice and just try to compare the trigger and the Glock 17 Gen 4 versus the uh, Gen 5. So here we go. All right, not perfect. First round kind of missed the trigger a little bit, but again, we're working with a stock trigger here on the Gen 4, not the greatest, uh, but accuracy was plenty good enough. So there you go. Uh, Gen 4, Glock 17. Now let's shoot the Gen 5, Glock 17. All right, check it out. moving probably a little bit too fast on that. You know, I started to get a couple rounds that were outside of where I wanted them to be. Still well within the margin of error though, to be honest. And you know, I gotta say, the uh, the trigger on the Gen 5 versus Gen 4 is much, much, much better out of the box. And you know, the fact that it's ambidextrous is nice too. Um, and I'll probably be making a switch myself from a Gen 4 to a Gen 5 here before too long, just to take advantage of some of the, uh, the upgrades that are made to the Gen 5 versus the Gen 4. My top two, the barrel, the uh, true match grade barrel, and also the ambidextrous slide release. So if you're a left-handed shooter, you still have a way to release the slide, which is nice. Uh, something else that we didn't mention before, but now that we've emptied our magazines, on the Gen 5s, you do have these orange followers which is kind of nice, so if you have a, a malfunction, you know, a quick glance into the, to an open slide, you can see high visibility. I can see I'm out of ammunition, you know, versus say just a classic open malfunction of some kind. Um, also, these magazines have a extended floor plate, which for some people makes it a lot easier to rip the magazine out in case you do have a malfunction, which requires you to apply a little bit more force when you take the magazine out of the gun. So there you go, Gen 5, 
Glock 17, I'm definitely a big fan.